Hello everybody and this is my weekly review. So in this video I pretty much go through um, some things that I've seen um, during my analysis over the weekend and uh, basically highlight what we're going to be test, what we're going to be looking at for the week coming forward. So for South African viewers I've got a bit of a bonus for you at the end of the video but you'll have to wait for the end of the video for that. And um, for the rest of us we really just going to run through quite a few currency pairs and then the main indexes that I normally trade and just really looking for opportunities. So it has been rather choppy. Um, I think it's about four weeks in a row now where we've pretty much been going sideways. I mean, kind of difficult to, to get trades going, especially on, on Forex pairs. But that uh, choppiness doesn't stay with us forever. So, you know, we've just got to be patient and wait for the opportunities. They will come. Okay, so the first one is New Zealand dollar USD. So we've been watching this for a while. And uh, the first thing that we're watching is this breakout here of this previous level. So this is 064895. As you can see, we broke up, we came back below. Then we tested it, tested it, and then we've got a weekly close above there. Okay. Now, there is a fairly strong, uh, if we just take that there. So we have a trend line there, which is broken. Now what we do have is a new trend line, which is pretty much this one. And if I run it back just a little bit, kind of like that, you'll see it's pretty well respected. So this is typical of touching of a trend line, pulling back, and then making another attempt at it. So this is starting to look pretty bullish for me at the moment of for a breakout. If we just come down to the 8th hour, because that is where we're going to be taking our levels, you'll see, now last week I was talking about this coming up and testing this level and seeing what's transpiring. The fact that we're through the weekly level now, I think we should be looking for opportunities to buy on this pair next week. So obviously we'll need to see breakouts and retests, but um, that's definitely something that I'm looking forward to on the New Zealand dollar uh, USD. So that is pointing to a stronger US dollar. Okay, so let's just keep that in, in our minds. The next pair that, that we're looking at, and we have to look at this, which is Euro USD. And as you can see, pretty much nothing going on uh, you know, for the last four weeks, towards the end of the fifth week, uh, sort of five weeks ago, towards the end of that week, it started. And since then, it's just been going pretty much nowhere. Okay. Now, if you look at the level that we're trying to maintain, so there's two here. The one is pretty much where price is, which is this previous swing high here. And you can see this green line is the current price line. And then the next one, and this is pretty messy. I'm just going to create a zone because you've got quite a few interactions with this area here, which is 111.839. Okay. Now, the other thing is, it's going to go to the 8R for this one. We've had a trend line break here and retest. There it is there. Okay. So for me, we're still going sideways. We're obviously going to have to drop below uh, 111.839 before I even start looking at shorts on this. Uh, you can see we are hugging the, the moving average at the moment. This, there's nothing going on at this, with this pair at the moment. But something will happen soon. And uh, if you look at the daily, you can see lots of range bars, uh, lots of indecision, uh, pretty much... Um, what we refer to as barbed wire. All these tails, the top tails, the bottom, it looks just like barbed wire. And that is what's transpiring here at the moment. So, you know, a lot of us, me included, have been watching this area here and saying, well, we need a breakout. And obviously the logical area is a breakout to the upside. Um, at this stage, based on the length that we've been ranging, uh, we can break either way. So I think a safer bet at the moment on this pair is just delete those. Don't worry about, um, oh, that's not what we want to do. Don't worry about diagonals. It is a range. Wait for the break of the range. Okay. Break to the upside, we're looking for longs. Break to the downside, we're looking for shorts. And obviously, we want the break and the retest, and then the rollover for short, and we want the break, retest, and climb for the long. Until that happens, it sits in the watch list. Um, pound Canadian dollar. Have another one which, uh, Pretty much been going sideways. You can see two, four, six, seven weeks that we've pretty much been going sideways. Now, 
the interesting thing for me is if you look to the left, look at this area here. That's kind of what we're playing with on the weekly. Remember, we're on the weekly chart now. So we've been making sort of um, higher lows, very low lows, yeah. Uh, we haven't quite taken out the swing low yet, but we are grinding to the downside. We are below the moving average. The minute we start coming to the eighth hour, you'll start seeing a little bit more choppiness. It looks like a double bottom here, but to be honest, the fact that we rejected this area here, that is now range, and those are my two levels. So we're looking for a breakout above 170.11.7 for a move to the upside, and we're looking for a break below, and I'm just gonna fine tune it a bit just to get down here, uh, 167757 for a move to the downside. Um, now another thing to bear in mind right now, we are slap bang in the middle of those two areas. So this is not an area you wanna be trading at all. You wanna be seeing these breakouts before you get in on this. Okay, so at the moment, this choppiness, I think, is going to continue. Don't be too surprised for us to get the bottom and then back the top. So you're looking for range trades. This is your setup at the moment. Okay, obviously, you break the upside, validate the double bottom, and then the height of this range is your target area. But again, just look to the left. There's a lot of support here. Okay, so pretty much we're on the first fractal here and if I draw a line on every single fractal to the downside you'll see the level of support that is here I think there's a double bottom here there we go okay so that is a very very um how do I put it that's a, a support heavy area does that make sense but it's an area of heavy support so it's, it's not something where I want to be shorting into I really don't want to be shorting into an area like this unless I'm scalping and uh, scalping pretty much coming down to the one hour and then you can see the targets are relatively far apart. So you'd be looking for take profit at each one of these levels. Okay, so that's pretty much what I'm looking at here. Um, I'm looking for a trend. I'm looking to get into something like this or even like this. But at the moment, this is sideways. Uh, sit on hands, you know, but it's worth watching because I think you're going to have, if it does break the downside, you're going to have these scalps available until it finds support somewhere. And something happens. Okay, uh, Euro New Zealand dollar. This is a, a pretty interesting pair at the moment. So, firstly, we broke through this area here. We found support there. Then we had a bit of confusion around it. And then we dropped below it. Okay. So if I come down to the next major area, which is here, you can see we found support there. We rallied, came back, tried again, failed, and we're now testing it. Okay, so that's my first level that we're look, going to leave in. The next one is pretty much where we are. It's this swing high here. Okay, so more than likely, we're looking for a move to the downside. However, just watch this here. Okay, so we have a falling wedge on the weekly. Now, Obviously, it's going to take a while for this to play out, but this is pretty much what we're looking at. So if we come down to the 8 hour, you're immediately going to see we found support here. We have rejected uh, this level up here. But I would, want us to, I would want us to see us to rally back into this area here of 173.414 and then look for a move to the downside, uh, pretty much to come and test this, this level here. If we do break above 176018 next week um or this coming week and we find a retest here that's going to break this trend line as well so that's going to set up a potential for a move back to the upside which is possible but just looking at the weekly um, you'd almost expect us to to come further down now i'm not sure about the fibonacci on this pair i just want to see where that takes us to now oh, way off okay so that's not going to help us at all. So um, the last area here is pretty much that trend line. Okay. Now, at the moment, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, we are pretty much in a downtrend. It's a pretty strong downtrend. And we should be looking for opportunities to sell into until we start making higher highs. So for now, I'm watching this area, 173.414. 
and looking for opportunities to get short up there. Uh, could be a little bit higher up as well because there is a fractal swing low a little bit higher right there and that is 174057. Um, what basically the kills that uh, strategy is going to be a bear break above 176018. Okay, so that's pretty much my strategy on Euro New Zealand dollar. Um, JPY, sorry, uh, British pound, J Japanese yen, uh, GBD, GB, GBP and uh, JPY, still early in the morning, I think. Uh, so basically, if you look at the, the daily, let's get on to the weekly. If you look at the weekly at the moment, we have a fairly strong consolidation area here, there and there. Okay, until we break through this on the weekly, they pretty much, this is the range we're going to be trading in. So rally to the upside, down, and sort of just keep flirting with um, the moving averages at the moment. But if we come down to the 8 hour, you'll see a fairly different picture here. So the first picture is we have broken through this previous swing, well, we haven't broken through that one. There it is there. So we've broken through the swing high. If you look to the left, there is more interaction, quite a bit of support in the past resistance. So we're back above this area and we closed above it. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second thing is we seem to have found support here as well. So that does almost validate a, a sort of a, a dull bottom for us. It was a public holiday in the US, so we pretty much only had half a half a trading day with the the European session, and that European session was very, very subdued. So um, at this moment in time, if this resistance here holds, so you support, so we've broken through, we've sort of ranged on it, and then we've closed above it. If this support holds, I'm looking for longs, okay? You can see there's also a trend line break here. Trend line break and retest. So there's a trend line break and then multiple retests before railing off here. So I think this is pretty much a trend change. And obviously this top of the weekly triangle is pretty much what we're looking for. So um, there's an area of, there's a target area right here. 136168. So that's pretty much a very good opportunity at the moment. Okay, we'll have to see how this thing plays out tomorrow morning. But I think um, we've got some... Upside, we'll probably get through this area as well, bounce off, give another opportunity to buy, and then we'll probably take profit up here near the trend line somewhere. Okay, so that definitely a pair you need to be watching out for. That's British pound, uh, Japanese yen, Euro pound. Just get this down here. Uh, I just want to zoom out a bit here. So Euro pound, you can see pretty much we are hovering on this area here. And um, forming a sort of a, looks like a higher, um, sort of a, a lower high. But one thing bugging me with this pair, I'm just going to come down to the 8 hour for this. And we have pretty much a wedge breakout with a fake out at the top of the wedge. And we come down. So... For me, I think we've probably got this weekly level that's going to play around with us a bit. But uh, if you just break out to the daily, and I take that trend line there, bring it all the way down to there. Okay, you can see quite a bit of interaction with that. And then if we take this trend line, and we do that, we have a channel, and uh, the last thing I want to do here is do that, and look where that rejection is. The rejection is right off the 61.8 Fibonacci. Um, I would almost be inclined to believe, you know, break through this area of support, and it is fairly very, it's very choppy at the moment, so you can see lots of touches here. But a break below this level and a retest of zero, let's just say zero ninety, okay. Um, sort of a break, retest that area and start moving. We're going to have a pretty strong move to the downside because I would take this measured move to the downside. 
So that's something that I'm watching for at the moment. If you look at the at the eight hour, here you can see a pretty strong move out. It was a breakout of a fairly good area, and the retest failed. We're back below. And now I'm looking for this area here. If we get below it. Uh, let's just get rid of the Fibonacci so we can clean this up. So we get below this level here. It's a trend line break as well. Retest. And then I'm looking for a move to the downside. And then you're pretty much looking at all your inside bars for profit areas. I'm not going to put them all in. I'm pretty sure. But now you guys know how we how I trade. Um, so you can see there's the inside bars there. Um, there's an inside bar there, which is fairly interesting. Uh, there's another one right over there. So pretty much I'd see a breakout, find some support, bounce up reject a level and then that's going to be our entry to the short side on this pair okay halfway through everything i hope you're still with us if you're not uh, pause and get a cup of coffee uh, if you're still watching us um, give us a thumbs up drop us a comment comments and, and likes um, do help us grow the channel and we are trying to grow the channel and uh, spread the love as much as we can anyway uh, moving straight on to pound aussie dollar so pound aussie dollar has been in a phenomenal downtrend we are coming up to an area of support, which is pretty much right here. You can see with resistance, with support, and we're bouncing around here again. So I do expect us to bounce here. I uh, don't expect us to really just fly through unless there's some catalyst that's going to drive this down. And uh, the reality is at the moment, the Australian mining industry is uh, pretty much doing very well at the moment in our mining country, so, which is why their currency is fairly strong at the moment. Um thing that I see here though is trend line breakout and potential retest. So I'd be reluctant to be looking for more shorts at the moment. Um, but I'm also reluctant to be looking at long. So if you have been riding this one short, yeah, watch out. This is an area that you need to pay attention to. Okay. For me, uh, staying on the watch list because I do believe there may be some opportunities for sort of a retracement of sort to the upside before continuing down or alternatively just running sideways in this sort of range area that we're in here. So basically staying below um, 181252, we could very well get a, a break through this level to the next weekly levels. And I don't think Um, how do I put it? There are pretty much that would be my next strong weekly level right over here. Okay, one seven six three one two. Okay, and um, if we just get to the monthly, just to see if there's a difference here. I think the the critical aspect here is we've got this monthly trend line that has broken. Okay, so would not be too surprised to see a bounce here, test this trend line as well. So that would be a a long up into this area and then a continuation to the downside. So this is setting up fairly strongly for a stronger move to the downside, but um, just not interested in that right in this area we are now. I want to see us come back and you can see how this trend line how it was respected, tested there, tested a second time. So uh, either we come up, test it again and move down or we break and test and then it's a continuation to the downside. Okay, so that's the currency pairs done for this morning. Those are pretty much what I'm watching. Um, typically what will happen is if I do see something else during the week, we will identify it in the weekly, in the daily videos. Uh, otherwise, we will just um, notify everybody on the Telegram channel. If you haven't joined the Telegram channel, it is, there's a link to it below in the description. Um, join us there and then all my trades are put in there. Haven't been much the last couple of weeks because there hasn't been much on offer. But, um, Typically, I'll put the proper trades. I won't do any scalps in there. So if I'm taking a scalp, I'll keep that to myself. I'm not really going to share that with anybody because it's a 50-50 opportunity. Okay, so the DAX, the DAX, the DAX. So we've pretty much been going sideways. Um, there's no two ways about it. If we look at this daily chart here, you can see we are going sideways at the moment. And until we break through this range, you know, I suspect we're going to continue going sideways. Now, there is so much noise at the moment around so many different things. So the first one that we all 
very aware of is that the the fundamentals around the economies of the world do not match what is happening with price okay so if you look at what's transpiring with um, fundamentals you know people are saying this is crazy we, we shouldn't be this high we shouldn't be trading at these levels um yeah something's gonna fall and and, and the fear starts the problem is you've got to trade what you see and what you see is price going up so go with the flow don't don't try back the system the minute you try backing the system you end up holding losing trades so for me the dax is not there, there is no long-term trend yeah there's no trend at the moment until we break through this range and even if we do break through this range to the upside i'm a little bit reluctant uh, maybe you know we stretch for one two nine three eight and then bounce down but uh, until we sort of break a trend line i think we we're going to have to just stay where we are um and i see we're on a very different template here let's really just get here let me just tidy the chart up sorry about that and um, so that was just a, a moving average strategy that I was playing with last week. Okay, so basically, the other thing to bear in mind here is we've got this flat top triangle, the breakout at the moment. We are looking relatively tired. Um, we are extremely overbought on most of the oscillators as well. So you know, I'm kind of reluctant to, to call this thing moving up higher much longer. It, the trend is moving up, so we should be trading with the trend. The fact that we had this hanging man on the daily is a signal. Uh, but bear in mind, if you look at the weekly, we had rejection, rejection, and then closing on a high. And closing on a high right here on a level. Okay, so this is definitely an area to be watching. Uh, whether we're going to break up and create all-time highs, yep, that's pretty much what it looks like is transpiring at the moment but I do suspect the bulls are going to come in uh, we're going to come short soon so the bears are waiting somewhere this is a logical area for them to be waiting to try and drive this thing down again and uh, any bit of bad news coming out of any of the markets right now is going to drive this thing down now uh, I think the US is going to be the catalyst so the US has not managed their the virus if as effectively as some of the people in the rest of the world and even those countries that have managed it effectively are still seeing that there is a another wave of infections coming by and um, the problem is that it, it's, it's not you know it's not the infection itself but it's the impact onto businesses that it does so this is uncharted territory and as far as I'm concerned right now uh, you want to be scalping this if anything but I'm very wary of longs okay I uh, can't really do an eight hour on the DAX because I don't have a 24 hour chart on this. So if we just look at the four hour, I'm really very wary. Okay, we're going sideways. We've popped up above this area that we've been playing with at the moment, but um, it's not much conviction here. And uh, that is what's concerning me. So I'm reluctant to be chasing shorts here. I'm also reluctant to be chasing longs. So in other words, for me right now, this thing is just wait and see wait for some catalyst and see what transpires this daily bar does give me sort of a a little warning bell going off in my head that i would expect a red bar on monday uh, but whether we get a red bar monday and then green bar tuesday or we just get a green bar and we shoot for the stars it's anyone's guess at the moment but i think messages be cautious be very cautious on the dailies uh, my daily videos will be looking at this on like a 15 minute time frame uh, just looking for the daily levels that we can go for okay uh wall street so wall street is um pretty much a similar pattern so what we have here is we've got a trend line that we are adhering to which is pretty much there and if you look at this micro trend line here on the weekly you see those three tails that have been selling off okay now, if we just delete the trend lines and let's just focus on horizontal support. Okay, so there is my first horizontal support. Okay, you can see it's very strong. We bounced off up there. Now, let me bring it down to the next strong level of support, which is these three here. Okay, 
and then you can see a rejection off there and you can see a bit of a resistance here so this area right here 26258 is definitely something we need to pay attention to and we've had three weeks in a row where we have rejected that level now on a number of my other strategies there are a few setups that are transpiring at the moment the fact that we are just staying pretty much above and below the moving average and moving average is flat that is an indication of a range now i'm going to pop down to the eight hour here and you can see that trend line was broken okay um we, we have been playing to the upside i am still was playing this double bottom as well pretty much from the bottom and that gives me a target area up here this weekly level has just been rejected again okay so if we just do that this level of 26258 has been rejected there's a rejection bar there and then confirmation confirmation and then we're kind of still hovering with the moving average now we really can't read much into the last couple of bars because the markets were closed in the u.s for independence day july the 4th but i'm i'm in two minds at the moment you know the trend is up yes trend is up we've broken up we've rejected that weekly level now again so this was not really a rejection there was a lot of price breaking through it and trying to hold it but that there is a rejection okay so is this a trend change i think that is the the question we need to pay attention to right now so i'm very reluctant to be long at the moment uh, whereas last week i was quite happy to be long um, at this stage i'm very reluctant to be long and pretty much looking for uh, breakouts and to see what's going to transpire so let's just drop down to four hours just to give you uh, the next level that I'm actually watching for and it's pretty much you can look to the left there you can see there's a lot of uh, resistance there a lot of support here interaction with it there there here and when we tagged here as well so I'm looking to see what happens at 25 580 see if we break that retest that that's going to give me some uh, confidence to the downside but look at this chaos here okay again it happened after hours that was thursday there was some good news some good dates that came through which peaked here and the sellers immediately stepped in so yeah so i think for me at the moment just glancing at this on the higher time frames it is screaming at me to say be careful uh yes this was a trend line break but there's not much conviction with this trend line break so we do have another trend line there so that was like a triangle breakout and it does look like it's becoming a fake out um, either way you know if we are going to get a second move it's going to be a violent second move pretty much um, a decent retracement and a, a decent retracement needed at the moment because this is not healthy so a decent retracement is needed find some support lower down and that's going to bring in the buyers again and then they'll slowly start building this back up again so anyway um, this I'm very wary of at the moment. S&P obviously is going to be exactly the same scenario. Um, the only difference here is this trend line here is very much intact. Okay, so that downward trend line is very much intact. This one here is also very much intact. Trend is up, still buying with this, but the same scenario here this area here that has been rejected five times now so you've got to wonder you know if we do get through this area it's going to be a pretty quick and rapid rise to the next level but if we continue rejecting this level then i think you have some more downside coming this double bottom which is what i was playing most of last week still hasn't played out but we're gonna to have to wait and see this does look like a flag forming as well if i do that strong move up flag another move up or rejection and we're rolling anybody's call at the moment but i think that level there is your current line in sand so that is 3158 okay 3158 um 3160 that area is pretty much your line in the sand 
And I think, you know, logically, we need to break below this um, trend line. So if it does move to the downside, don't be too surprised to see some buyers coming in off this um, 30, 48 area where it should be around, yeah, 30, 50, 30, 48, somewhere around there. Um, I would not be too surprised to see buyers come in off there. Um, there's a logical level right there, which is 30, 61. Okay. Um, and then maybe this just becomes a range and we sort of stuck in this range until we get some direction. Okay. So S&P, bit of a mixed bag, same as the Wall Street, same as the DAX. So, you, you know, we're going to have to be trading a lower time frame. Higher time frames are not giving us much. Uh, high time frames are warning us to be very careful. We are extremely oversold, or overbought, sorry. And um, we need to be looking for opportunities uh, to buy lower down rather than buying at the top. Okay. So the trend is up. Mm, can't argue with that. But I think the sideways motion here, this range is starting to extend be beyond 20 bars as well. I think it really started there to here. Um, so we had 47 bars. So it can, it can break either way, up or down. You know, your bias to the upside is wavering slightly. Or my bias to the upside is wavering slightly. Okay. on top 40 and for any of you international guys still watching and you can trade the Aussie um, if you enjoy uh, roller coasters and theme parks this is the instrument for you um, it has extreme moves as quick and within three minute candles which um, can basically either give you a heart attack or get you rushing off to the shops to buying cigars and whiskey anyway so, yeah, if you look at the weekly, we pretty much been ranging in this area for quite a few years. Uh, break out here, then back, and we tested it, and then break out here pretty strong for the virus, and then back into this area at the moment. Now, the, the thing about the Aussie is that you can't really get a read on the long-term charts, okay, because <laughs> long-term, it's pretty much going sideways. I think yeah, we've been ranging between 50,000 and uh, well, 55,000 and 47,000 area for many years. I'm going back 2007, pretty much. Okay, so just coming down to the daily on the Aussie trend has been up. There it is. There, yeah, I mean, you should be looking for opportunities to buy every single opportunity, and um, this just has. If I go back to another time and place, oh, where was it? It was pretty much here, 2018. So 2018, you can see here, we had this pretty strong range to the downside to the bottom of, there it is there. Okay, so we were ranging down here, broke out, retested, and then basically reverse direction. Okay, now I think what we've got brewing at the moment is yes, we're not quite at the top here yet we do have a couple of gaps here i think those gaps are closed now oh, that one's closed we've got one little gap to the upside um, but just looking at this we've hit the top of the, the channel down hit the top of the channel down now we haven't really got back up there and it's sort of uh, up down up down up down and if you look at it from a price action perspective, trend is up, agreed. We should be looking to be buying off this area. But these candles that are forming here, I'm starting to get a little bit worried about that. I wouldn't be wanting to chase longs just yet. And um, looking at the four hour, we have a little bit of a situation brewing here. So up, down, up, down, up, down. So big up, big down, big up, big down, big confusion. Okay, and then Sort of in our channel but we're not really getting above that we're not forming lower lows either okay so my next point of call is to start doing that okay so there i have a bit of a fake out and we're still holding this trend line so that is a bit of a wedge for me it's a rising wedge after a move down and for me what I'm looking at here is something to the tune of that. And that should target these downside gaps here. Okay, so 
the Aussie right now, um, we're on the four hour already. So that's why I say, you know, you can't really look at this on a daily basis at the moment. It's pretty messy. But it does look like a bit of a parabolic curve it's forming. You can see here our uptrend line starting to roll up. So in other words, the lows are not coming down to test the trend line, but coming up from a different area. Um, we also have high, high, high. And the question at the moment is, do we have a lower high forming? And I think the only way you're going to get that is a break sort of below these daily closes here. But I mean, look at the price action at that area. Okay, so this is 50, 0, 60. It's probably 50,000 where the rejection's coming off. Um, but we're above it at the moment, and we've got an inside bar. So, yeah, I think yeah, the confusion continues in this area. That there, so this bar down, I mean, look here, we close down here, then the next day we gap up here, really, and then the next day we sort of just hover doing nothing. That there is a, is a very bearish signal. To have an engulfing pattern like that that basically takes up the previous two days and then the next day to rally and gap up and rally i mean as i say if you if you're into theme parks and uh, joy rides this is the this is the instrument for you and um, you can make a lot of money and you can lose a lot of money but anyway um yeah i think for, for the aussie guys confusion is the same as the rest of the instruments i think i think that's pretty much sort of the moral of the story here. Uh, I don't think I would be looking for anything at the moment, um, and I haven't been looking for anything on the Aussie for quite some time. But um, by the looks of things, if this thing does get started moving to the downside, I think it's going to be a pretty violent move if it breaks through this channel, because that's just the norm of what happens with this thing over time. So you can see every time we get a channel, so there's a channel up, and we break down quite violently. Channel up, we break down. A second test, break down violently. Then here's your, your other channel here. Where's my channel? So there's my other channel there. And look at that. Up, break down violently. Now, that's actually an interesting scenario here. Breakouts, we're retesting that channel break. So does anyone guess, guys? I think um, the moral of the story is be very, very careful. You know, you look at the weekly, we had a rejection bar. And then we've got this engulfing bar at the moment. I'm very reluctant to be looking for, for longs at this area. I'll be looking for longs further down, definitely. But this scenario at the moment, I don't think that is an opportunity to be buying at all at the moment. And uh, I don't think it's an opportunity to sell either. So I think hold on to your cash. But um, watch what happens on the, the lower time frames. You can see strong move up, really confused move. And then we're forming this little wedge. So I wouldn't be surprised to see another move to the upside before some catalyst sets us off in a direction one way or the other anyway so um probably doesn't help anyone it's really confusing at the moment so i think all the markets are the same scenario anyway guys that's it uh pretty long video if you're still watching please uh, give us a thumbs up drop us a comment um i try i do answer all the questions that come up as well and um we will catch up with you in the week stay safe and uh, we'll see you bright and breezy tomorrow morning. Cheers for now.